good afternoon. Welcome to the Mesa Refinery Watch Citizens Action Meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you what would, ha what would be traveling into and out of Slow County 520 times each year if Phillips 66 is allowed to proceed with the project. Well, now we dim the lights, so you can really, <laughs> now I can't see, but uh, <laughs> uh, maybe you can have just a tad more lighting, please. <laughs> tad, tad. Let's, there's, there's a baby tad. All right, today we're going to review three things. Uh, the logistics of what's happening regarding the rail terminal project. Number two, the major issues and our reactions um, and the presentations by our steering committee members. And lastly, and most important, what all of our group's members must collectively do, which is where our fellow citizens will be called upon to help. And that will be presented to you at the end. And we, I just want to remind folks that we will be having questions and answers after our presentations. The only thing I ask is when we get to that point, make it a question, and not an, 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 you know, not a long, drawn-out statement because we have a lot to cover here today. First of all, I do want to introduce um, Supervisor-Elect of uh, Slow County, Lynn Compton, is on her way. She said she might be a little bit late, so I will reintroduce her, but she will be here. And I do want to introduce Fire Chief Robert Lewin, back in the back. And let me ask, is there anyone else in the um, room that is an elected official and may, or uh, I asked for the sheriff department to someone from that uh, department to come in. Are they here? No, okay. And of course we have our own elected official, Art Herbon, who will be speaking to us and he is our representative to the SCAC. That's South County Advisory uh, Council. Now I want to take a brief moment to introduce the steering committee members, and we have two advisors to our group. First of all, Sam had Sam Saltoon had a conflict in his schedule today, and Lee Edmondson uh, is a little under the weather, so he came in and had to leave. But up front we have Marty Akel, who does our newsletter, and does such a beautiful job. Then we have Tom Ryan, who's just joined us, and we have Lawrence Schinderman and Gary McKibble, Mike Nelson, uh, John Anderson, and we have Yvonne Williams up front, who is uh, on our advisory uh, committee, as well as Paul Stoltman 
is on our advisory committee. We also have um, a new member of our group is, who is taking over the email list, and that's Steve Dubow. Steve, are you in the room? I didn't see you yet. No, there he is, back there. And that's because we have uh, our dear Tom Wallace is on the injured reserve list, so uh, Steve is taking over. All right, I'm gonna turn the microphone over to Art Herbon to discuss the process regarding the P66 issue to, uh, and how, regarding the South County Advisory Council. Thanks, Linda, for inviting me today. Uh, my name is Art Herbon. I'm on the South County Advisory Council, and I, rep I represent this area, including areas west of Pomeroy and south of Black Lake Canyon. Um, I want to go through the process of this rail spur project as it relates to the county's process. Originally, the environmental impact report was released in early 2014, and the Mesa Refinery Watch Group and Phillips 66 made a presentation to South County Advisory Council. Uh, ultimately, in that meeting, there were so many questions that the South County Advisory Council had that we tabled it and we wouldn't make a decision. And ultimately, after that, the, the, uh, the EIR was withdrawn by Philip 66 during the summer and then reissued about a month ago. So when it was reissued about a month ago, uh, there was a 45-day process for uh, written comments, which will be covered a lot today. And uh, part of, so as part of that 45-day uh, period, the South County Advisory Council had another uh, meeting with Phillips 66 and Mesa Refinery Watch Group. And uh, the Mesa Refinery Watch Group made their presentation at the South County Advisory Council about 10 days ago. Uh, Phillips 66 elected not to make a presentation, but they were there to answer questions. And uh, I can tell you, following the meeting, uh, uh, we, we were directed to write a letter to the county uh, expressing our, our comments and questions to the county. We decided not to make any decisions because it's still a preliminary process. All those letters that you write are going to go into the final EIR. So there were 850 letters last time, and there will probably be 850 or more next time. So, so there was no decision made at the, at the South County Advisory Council. However, uh, uh, we, did, uh, we did send uh, our uh, comments to the county, and they are filed with uh, Murray Wilson as well as the Board of Supervisors. The next step after November 24th, and uh, when all of the co comments have been digested into the EIR, then the SCIC will revisit the issue and will make our recommendations to the county. Following that, the Planning Commission will hear the issue and they'll make a decision. And then following the Planning Commission's decision, undoubtedly it'll go for, before the Board of Supervisors. So that's the process. It's a long process. Uh, uh, I, think, I think there's gonna be a lot come out, in, come out, come out today about this, about, uh, about it, and I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it at that so that I uh, leave time for you guys to do your part. Uh, I, I would, uh, at this point, I'd like to have Linda come back up and introduce our supervisor. Uh, thank you, Art. I would like to introduce super, uh, Supervisor-Elect Lynn Compton. Lynn, do you mind uh, standing and waving at everyone? Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to let everyone know that we are going to be filming our presentation here, but do not feel uncomfortable. We will be turning any kind of filming off when it gets down to the questions and answers if you're not comfortable with that. Uh, I also want to say we do have seats available, so let's fill in. Uh, hi, hi, Mac. We do have a seat, the second row. We have an extra one up here in front next to Lynn. We have a few over on that side. Raise your hands if you have a seat. There's, this is going to be um, a, a little bit of an event today, so I don't want you, your feet to swell or anything. So, <laughs> All right. But we have one more up here front and one over here. There's two over here. Don't be shy. Yeah, make new friends. And there's one right here, second row in. 
Okay, good. All right, let's move along here. Just for the record, we'd like to state uh, that from the beginning, our group has been nonpartisan, not affiliated with a political party. We specifically agreed to never endorse a candidate. We've always had the hope that all public officials have our citizens' best interest at heart. We have sought the support from outside, uh, from outside other groups, or outside our groups. Uh, we recently met with statewide groups that are uh, also concerned with the impact of P66 on the health and safety of California citizens, and they will provide help in having concerned citizens, other than those, uh, the, other than our comments, uh, write emails, letters to Slow County F uh, Planning Commission. We ha we're having concerned citizens attend the public hearing. These other groups are going to help us get other citizens attend the uh, large meeting uh, in the, at the Planning Commission on January 29th. That's a, a tentative uh, appointment or time, but uh, we do want to all mark our calendars for that event. Now, um, different members of our steering committee will discuss with you the very specific issues you need to become aware of and react to in order to protect ourselves from the P66 rail spur. The first person is going to be Marty Akel, who is going to give us an overview.